What's up everybody, this is the Act Man here, and today it's been a while since my last Halo video. Let's check in on how things are going. 12 seconds later. Joe Staten is leaving the studio to rejoin Xbox Publishing. No, God! It's done, bro. It's done. No, God, please, no! Joe's gone. No! Joe is gone. No! Joe Staten, Joe Staten has left before three. Ah, it's not fair! This is a studio that was hit especially hard by the layoffs, and it's raising some concerns about the future of the Halo franchise. Can Halo just catch a break, man? Like, the bad luck should have run out by now, unless 343 was built on an Indian burial ground. Sometimes, that is better. Given the events between uh, the release of Halo Infinite and now, I think we're all a little bit worried about the future of the Halo franchise. This is a topic that we've rarely discussed on the channel. Yes! As I'm sure you've heard, bad news. Microsoft and many other tech companies have announced loads of layoffs in preparation for a recession that, once again, I'm sure Obama is responsible for. Damn you, Obama! But there's quite a few angles to this story, and I hope to cover them all. More importantly, I, I, I hope to answer the question that is no doubt burning in so many people's heads. How could this happen to Halo? And of course, we've got other fun questions like should 343 continue developing the Halo games? Or is it time another studio had a crack at it? Uh, definitely a hot topic of discussion. And what do these job cuts mean for the future of Halo and 343? What is the state of Infinite right now? Are they gonna unfuck the TV show in season two? What are you doing? So many questions, so much uncertainty. Now, before we jump any further into it, this video is sponsored by Bespoke. Bespoke is a website that offers all sorts of themed boxes of goodies. Every month they introduce new boxes and all sorts of awesome stuff inside them. There's a huge variety. You could get a knife set, some new boxers, nice. cigars, fine whiskey straight from the saloon, and my personal favorite, the Scorch Box, filled with all sorts of amazing hot sauces. Each box contains items worth $70, but only costs $49. And if there's one thing you gotta get, it's the Weekender Bag, the perfect character carry on for any situation. You get to preview the contents of the box, and if you don't care for it, you can switch it out or skip the month entirely at no extra cost. When signing up, you'll take a short survey to gauge your interests, and then boom, solid recommendations right there. And use my special link, bespokepost.com slash act20, and enter the code act20 to get 20% off your first box. And use my special link in the description and pinned comment to do so. Treat yourself right. And thank you to Bespoke for sponsoring this video. And now for something completely different. The recent layoffs and important staff leaving 343 has left loads of room for speculation and rumor. As some said, 343 was retiring as a Halo developer entirely. Former employees have come out to speak about piss poor management at Microsoft. It just seems like this is kind of a fucking disaster, you know what I mean? Now, where to begin untangling this? Well, Microsoft will be laying off 10,000 employees between January 8th and June 30th. And this wasn't a targeted drone strike, okay? This was blind fire into the crowd. Pretty much all aspects of Microsoft's business will be or probably have been hit by these layoffs, including their subsidiaries like the Coalition, Bethesda, and of course, 343. You might have noticed something odd about this. Namely the timing, because coincidentally the announcement that they will be laying off 10,000 employees comes a year to the day, exactly one year to the day, that Microsoft announced they were buying Activision Blizzard. Now, uh, I'm no gambler, but that seems like a 1 in 365 chance of that happening. And to go with an age-old quote, But as one trained in the force, you know that true coincidences are rare. So they're likely making room for this colossal takeover, which got me thinking, how many people work at Activision Blizzard? 9,800, awfully close to 10K. But as one trained in the force, you know that true coincidences are rare. Now I wanna say that layoffs like these are always really tough on a lot of hardworking people that don't necessarily deserve to lose their jobs. I hope all the people who lost their jobs can land on their feet and get a new one. And please don't attack or be an asshole to anyone at 343. You know, now's not a good time to ask, hey, when are playable elites coming back? You already know the answer, it's never. <laughs> So this begs the question, with all the studios and IPs Microsoft has or is acquiring, do they need as many people to work on Halo? Maybe the Halo franchise 
is determined to just not be as profitable. So they're pulling resources from it. You know, why invest at trying to revitalize this thing that hasn't worked for the better part of a decade when you got Call of Duty coming in and Call of Duty always sells. Even when everyone agrees the games are shit, it still tops the charts every year. Now I could be talking out my ass uh, when I give this take, but uh, it seems kind of odd for a company to cut jobs in a business that's doing really well. Now, I did hear from an inside source at Bungie uh, something interesting. They said, in 2008, a year after Halo 3 released, an unprecedented economic crisis hit the US and the world. Bungie ended up hiring more people and made ODST and Reach. It's not always the economy. From what we've heard, 343 has lost about 60 employees, uh, with 30 of those coming from the art team alone. Certainly doesn't bode well for Infinite given the already sluggish pace of updates, their eternal struggle to deliver promises and meet deadlines, and provide any semblance of a live service. Most of the cuts were geared towards the campaign art and animation teams, which has pretty much destroyed any idea of Infinite Campaign DLC. Yeah! I thought that was going to be a given when the game first came out, and then they just had the, those lame-ass story events that I think they've abandoned now. My gear. It's not standard issue. It's necessity. History. Neil Harrison, the former director of art management, was among one of the layoffs. So basically, the art team that gave us this. The team that finally gifted us the Halo art style we have been waiting for. Are they just all gone now? It's also important to note that Microsoft is cutting 10K jobs over a period of time. This didn't just happen uh, at once, which makes it all the more interesting to me why 343 was hit immediately, you know? Like, I'm just trying to put all the pieces together to get an accurate reading on the state of 343 and, by extension, the state of the Halo franchise. I don't think it's looking good. Now, a former 343 employee came out, Patrick Wren, and said, the layoffs at 343 shouldn't have happened, and Halo Infinite should be in a better state. The reason for both of those things is incompetent leadership up top during Halo Infinite development, causing massive stress on those working hard to make Halo the best it can be. And Jason Schreier from Bloomberg seems to agree with this statement, and uh, it pretty much confirms what I've heard about behind the scenes development. Which brings us to Joe Staten, our boy. While he has not technically been laid off from 343, he is leaving to resume his position at Xbox Publishing. It is a sad day. Now, technically we should have expected this since this was kind of the plan the whole time, uh, but the timing is like right alongside all of these layoffs. The timing is just really bad. One might say, sus. And to see someone like so revered by the Halo community uh, leave at a time like this, you know, it. It sucks, man. Wouldn't it have been great if Joe was working on more story elements? It seemed like every time he appeared in a video is just to deliver bad news, you know? It's like, oh, what could have been? So amidst all this controversy, people started to speculate that 343 would be given the boot from Halo entirely. Let's give it to id Software. Let's give it to Infinity Ward or, or Treyarch or F f no fucking keep it away from Sledgehammer, actually. Let's let's reel that idea back. But some of these rumors garnered so much attention that it warranted an official response from Pierre Heinz, who's now the head of 343. He made a short statement on Twitter that reads, Halo and Master Chief are here to stay. 343 Industries will continue to develop Halo now and in the future, including epic stories, multiplayer, and more of what makes Halo great. The word vague comes to mind, right? <laughs> you can't say the franchise is in a good Good state when it is necessary for leadership to come out and say don't worry guys we all still have a job like we're still gonna be making Halo it, could you imagine if Nintendo was like don't worry fellas we're still gonna be making Mario games like at what point <laughs> at what point does that happen what does it say about the state of things like like what I imagine what what could have possibly prompted such a response to be necessary? The reaction to uh, the statement from Pierre has been interesting. You've got some people relieved that things aren't going to change and that 343 is still going to be in the loop on things. And you've got others who are disappointed, not reassured. <laughs> but I also think it's funny when he says epic stories uh, right as the time that they're laying off a, a whole bunch of the campaign team. The endless will return.
So we're probably not going to ever learn what the endless are. I'm, I'm telling you. <laughs> With 343's track record, this will probably be a plot point that they just kind of like solve off screen. And the next Halo game is going to once again reboot the story. You know, I, I still to this day don't fully understand what has been happening at the studio that has caused it to be so dysfunctional to have um, not a very productive or conducive workflow. I don't work there, so, you know, take everything I say with a grain of salt, but, you know, there's been barely any updates for Halo Infinite, despite the large workforce on paper. Uh, player numbers are... Well, let me just put this on screen for you. That about sums it up. Even if this was in July, Infinite should not be underperforming what is objectively the worst Battlefield game ever. Then you got Microsoft's company-wide hiring freeze, which has been going on for God knows how long, which meant even if 343 needed more hands on deck, they just couldn't get them. Not to mention Microsoft being stingy and weird as hell with its practices on contracted work, which as Patrick Wren says, is a whole other can of worms. Can I just say, Microsoft, your strategy with contract work is clearly not working out. I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed. Fable trailer came out two and a half years ago. Not a peep since. Elder Scrolls 6, ladies and gentlemen, it has been four and a half years since the trailer. And I get that Bethesda is working on Starfield, but this is a pattern I'm noticing with a lot of Xbox exclusives. We get a trailer and then it's years of nothing, like huge chunks of time, years before we get any kind of update. Like, think about this. We didn't see multiplayer gameplay for Infinite until five and a half years after Guardians released. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's not just one thing that's been holding Halo back from the glory of success. Now, I wanna take this section of the video to look at some of the notable people that have left 343 in recent years. And my goal in doing this is not to point the finger and say, ha ha, number company bad, but rather to illustrate how much talent and experience had been at the studio and is no longer there. It, it, to offer some kind of explanation for the studio's current woes. Chris Lee was head of production for Infinite for two years and has gone off the grid after leaving Halo, which I find very strange because normally a lot of developers, they don't like leave social media entirely after they leave a video game project. I don't know, but he left at the end of October 28th, 2020. He had been working at Microsoft since 2003 and was involved in the production of Reach ODST 4 and 5. Tom French, multiplayer creative director and the head of development on Forge for Halo 5. He left December 2022. Our boy Tom was at 343 for 11 years. Quindell Hoyle, Halo Infinite lead sandbox designer, left shortly after Infinite's release. He spent nine years with the company. Mary Olson, Halo Infinite lead producer, was with 343 for seven years and stepped down less than two months after taking that position from Tim Longo, who was the Halo 5 and Halo Infinite creative director, but left in 2019. He was there for six years. Sparth, Infinite Art Director, left 343 after 14 years. Andrew Witz, Infinite Multiplayer Lead, left the company on March 4th, 2022. He had worked on Infinite since 2019. David Berger, Technical Director, been with 343 since 2008. One of the lead creators of the Slipspace engine, he left just days after Bonnie Ross. Aaron Lind, lead writer, left 343. Jerry Hook, online design director, then later head of design for Infinite, left 343 on May 25th, 2022, after working with Microsoft for over 20 years. And finally, Bonnie Ross, the matriarch of Halo, who was there at 343 from its inception, and who recently stepped down after 15 years leading the Halo franchise. Not every one of these people left 343 because of some, you know, mad Kim Kardashian type drama, but it's like the turnover rate of senior and executive staff, it's a lot, man. It's weird looking back on some of the trailers in Vidox and seeing like all the people who are no longer with the company. It seems to me when this many people with that much experience leave a company, there's just this massive vacuum of knowledge left in its wake. The thing is, I'm not sure how many people currently at 343 have been working on Infinite since the beginning and are now working on the live service. You get what I mean? So to me, it makes sense why updates and fixes are taking so long for this game. Because most of the people working on the game didn't write the code they're trying to fix. At least that's that's what I gather. I could be wrong. Whatever the issues seem to be behind the scenes, like why, you know, it's not quite 
coming together all the way. Whatever the reasons are, Microsoft has remained the one common factor in all of this. It seems swapping people out of important roles at 343 has not produced the results they want. Infinite was delayed a year. It's been seven years since the release of Guardians. And <laughs> like, where is Infection? Like, why, why is something like Infection so hard? You know? <laughs> Maybe Microsoft was always intent on killing the goose that laid the golden egg, and when they got a new goose that laid bronze eggs, well, they had to kill that one too. Just my theory. And to go back to the topic of uh, contractors, you ever take a few minutes to skim the endgame credits? Well, if you do, you might notice that some names, actually quite a few names, have uh, parentheses indicating what company they were contracted from. There's a, there's a lot of parentheses. Look at how many different collaborating studios they worked with and, and contracting companies. Airship Images, Atom Hawk, Axis Studios, Certain Affinity, Counterpunch, A Virtuous Studio, Expiris, Insight Global, Lakeisha Digital, Liquid Development, Mandali Games, Mindwalk, Noir Studios, OF3D, Pixel Mafia, Red Hot CG, Room 8 Studios, Skybox Labs, Sparasoft, The Coalition, and Undead Labs. <laughs> I can't even imagine the logistics behind working with that many different companies, let alone trying to get your own studio uh, on the same page a and like trying to get everybody I in a rhythm with a singular goal and a single vision of, of what the game should be. And if you look very closely at the credits, you might notice something very interesting. Uh, that being the section on testing, it appears that most or all of Halo Infinite's testing was done by contractors. If I'm not mistaken, a similar thing happened with Cyberpunk and, um, well, we all remember what that was like at release. So like, if you want to find a reason, the reason I'm talking about like the workforce and the contracting employees is that the biggest issue with development of Halo post Bungie has been the lack of a consistent vision for what Halo should be. Like I said, Halo 4 feels like the start of a new trilogy, and then we get 5, which feels like the start of a new trilogy. Same thing with Infinite. I, I think what 343 does a lot of is they incorrectly identify what the problem is, and then overcorrect it. For example, think about the co-op mechanics in Halo 5 and being able to, you know, command Spartans around. Something could have been done with that in Infinite. The problem wasn't the co-op mechanics themselves in the campaign. The problem was uh, you had three AI companions from start to finish, and the entire game was balanced around it. But imagine if some of that work was salvaged and put into infinite. Let's say now you can command marines. Hey, go get in that warthog, drive it over here. Simple shit like that. It adds a new layer to the game. You've already done some work on it. That's just how my brain thinks. Uh, uh, here's a more tangible example. How about all the unused assets and hundreds of weapons they made in Halo 5? Like. Where is the Mantis? I feel like the Mantis should be in Infinite. So many sandbox tools were, you know, they weren't perfect in 5, but they were good. Like the CE Magnum, the Halo 2 Battle Rifle. Again, th things that you just think should be in the game. It just seems like 343 has a let's cut our losses and start over philosophy. And that needs to end, dude. Again, look at Elden Ring and look at Mario Odyssey in Smash Bros. Ultimate. Those games all built up to that final ultimate title that is just that's what halo infinite should have been the smash bros ultimate of halo 343 has had a a lot of amazing ideas that they've left half-baked and i'd rather eat a half-baked potato than a frozen one halo is a series that needs a consistent vision and a consistent team to pursue that vision we always had this vision right from the get-go which is anyone can build anything giving the fans the tools they can take and run with it and make it their own. And when you've got a, a fucking carousel of leaders, executives, and contractors going in and out, in and out, it's hard to maintain that consistent vision. Halo should have assassinations. The game would only be better with assassinations or playable elites. Forge should have been there at launch. Griffball, these, these are just staples. It should be there. We all agree, we all understand it. Campaign co-op. It should just be there. Think about split-screen co-op. That was the first thing they 
ever announced for the game that would become Infinite. Can we reveal anything about the next Halo FPS title today? I think the only thing that we'll confirm as we do listen to fans, um, there will be split screen. Liar! We, the first thing we learned about the game coming after Halo 5, it was gonna have split screen co-op. They didn't even know what the fuck the title was, but they knew that. It just seems like 343 wasted a lot of time in pre-production being unable to figure out what direction to take the game in. You know, there's so much unfinished work in, in the files for Infinite that we've seen. Like, people have known about Infection since before the game came out, I think. And it, it just feels like so much work from people has been rendered superfluous or was like a waste of time or nobody has bothered to, to finish work on certain things. Like the smoke screen and the bandit rifle. It's just making a great Halo game is is real fucking hard. But that's what makes it special. You know? They set Halo up for failure. Attitude reflect leadership, Captain. And to see former 343 staff say that and blast the leadership, well, it indicates to me that the lack of vision started from the top and it trickled down. That's why Halo is in the state that it's in. But to come back to the main question. Is there any hope for Halo? Well, there's always hope, but I think if, if you're happy with the state of things, then you were naive and wildly unrealistic. Realistically, I think at this point, the 343 brand is associated with a lot of negativity in parts of the community. I think it all comes back to Microsoft, in my opinion. All of this falls squarely on Microsoft's shoulders, I think. Because at the end of the day, they own the franchise, and they've owned it for a long time. They are in charge of who is in charge. Simple as that, you know, to whoever is going to continue developing the Halo games, I just hope you have a consistent vision for what you want to do. A consistent vision of what makes Halo great. Build on the success of the franchise instead of tearing it down to start anew every few years. See if you can salvage some of the work and reuse certain assets from previous titles to make new ones feel more complete. So in conclusion, it is another sad day for Halo, uh, 343 and Halo fans. But we will persevere. I don't know what the future holds, but I'd be lying if I said things are looking better. But thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did and subscribe to The Act Man for more awesome content. Don't forget to check out Bespoke and get yourself a themed box of goodies. All right, everyone, that's all I got for today. This is The Act Man signing out. Peace.